Jaron Jackson Jr. is leading the NBA in blocks, is one of, if not the single most impactful rim protector in the NBA, can switch one through five on guards and bigs alike, is able to contain and defend five out offenses in the modern NBA, and is one of the best roaming defenders and IQ defenders I have ever seen. When it comes to breaking down individual defense, it's important to note that I prefer versatility and switching over rim protection or one singular skill. Now, Jaron Jackson Jr. can switch one through five, which is extremely important in today's modern NBA. Here we see him switching onto Steph Curry. Steph tries to dance a little bit. He contains the drive and even stays with him on the relocate, something that a lot of defenders get lost on when they're guarding Steph Curry. Shows his chest, cuts off the good drive with good angles here. When he does switch, he prefers to force players into their help. Here we can see him guarding Anthony Edwards, forcing him to his right, where in this case he has the gap help at the nail or his help defender. Ant attacks his lead leg well, but Jaron Jackson Jr. flips his hips and then contests the pull up. When he does switch out, he's able to press up and pressure more than normal. So you see him switching on to Zach Levine here, forcing a little ball pressure that ends up in a turnover for the Bulls. And he also has the ability to switch on drive. So here you can see the driving kick and on the redrive, he's able to switch, cut off the drive, and then they help off a non-shooter. The most common switch is a like for like, the way the Grizzlies like to use him in terms of the size of players. If it's like Tillman or Brandon Clark, they will switch any of that action involving Jaron Jackson Jr. and those players. So that way they can keep him on the opponent's either weak shooter or opposite big. So here he switches on the roll. And then when the drive happens, he's able to rim protect and get the block. When he does switch on to a weaker offensive player like Austin Rivers here compared to Steph and Anthony Edwards, he will sit and sag in the gap more often than not or around the nail and be able to stop any drives or penetration and then try to close out as best as possible to the three-point shots or be able to sag in the gap, uh, tag off on rolls and be the help defender and not allow any driving kick opportunities and prefer the three-point shot over the drive to the rim and protect the basket first. With more and more teams in modern NBA offenses playing five out, the ability to guard one through five or be able to stop drives in five out or nullify five out offense is extremely important. When you talk about a defensive player of the year candidate, Jaron Jackson Jr. does a great job of nullifying any spaced out bigs, five out spacing, his ability to roam, but also stay mobile and pre to prevent any easy drives on closeouts is absolutely incredible. One of the things that I really love is his ability to ball pressure or shadow anytime a big has the ball up top his hands are usually following where that ball is whether it's high whether it's low and he's able to stop any clear vision with most teams passing the ball to a big in the perimeter instead of sagging off he does have the ability to ball pressure and mimic what the offensive player is looking for and take away any of the clear vision a great example of that here is when the warriors go to their zipper back door set where they have steph act like he cuts up to the top hit Draymond in the post and then pass to him back door Jaron Jackson Jr. here does a great job of recognizing the ball in Draymond's hand in the post. Steph's going to go back door, gets his hands up high and active, deflects, disrupts the play. Another example of that here when Anthony Edwards is denied or top locked and forcing into the lane. He does a good job of getting his hands in the passing lane, forces a tough pass at least to a turnover. This versatility is also shown in aggressive ball screen defense where you see him uh, hard hedging or playing more higher up on like a three point shooting threat. Players like Jordan Clarkson, Steph, Jordan Poole, you know, Anthony Edwards, Damian Lillard, whoever it is, he can play more aggressive and be a little bit higher if a player is rolling or if they want to take away those three point shot attempts, then go back to the roamer and disruptor on the backside. This aggressive defense is usually reserved for the best players in the NBA or what we would consider at the level of the screen. So like Steph Curry in this clip, you can see him being higher up, Damian Lillard here being higher up. But the ability to be higher up is not what I love. I love his reactions and his ability to recover to roll men who are open as he gets the block here. And another example of that here where he's higher up on Levine, then he recovers back to the roll and is now in low help position. 
Although he can play more aggressive, the preferred way that the Grizzlies use him is in up to touch or at the level of the ball screen, where you see him higher up, preventing any three-point opportunities, and then recovering back to the roll man. This is a bit of a fine line between being high enough, but also recognizing when to recover back to your man, being able to play you know, the two players in, in between the cat and mouse game, if you will, in ball screen defense. And Jaron Jackson Jr. is fantastic at being higher up and then recovering back to his man if he catches it on the roll, but also recognizing like when a player like Nas Reed in five out pick and pops here, when to stay and when to help, as you can see, uh, Jalen Noel break the line, free throw line here, and Jaron Jackson Jr. recognized that and recovering for the block. Follows Gobert here in the same situation, then realizes Anthony Edwards prefers to drive so he can test at the rim. I love how he always plays in between, recognizing where the ball is going to go, where the angles are, is able to protect the rim as much as possible. And this rim protection is a true value of Jaron Jackson Jr. Usually the low help man or the help man in the lane on the opposite side. So when drives are driven in the lane, he's able to be the rim protector, use his length, his versatility, his timing, and protect that rim. Typically opposite is where he'll help from, be able to time out the block, but also does a great job of recognizing when to close out, recover, and then cut off drives and be able to rim protect on any secondary action off of that, like we can see here. He also does a great job of recognizing when not to help. As you can see, the Celtics have a slight advantage that could be a drive here, but Dylan Brooks does a good job of cutting off the angle on the drive here so Jaron Jackson Jr. doesn't overcommit. Another example of that here, when Jordan Poole is driving, he's defending Draymond in five out. He looks like he might be helping here, but as soon as he realizes Bain has it covered, he doesn't overcommit and stays spaced out. The art of roaming is what makes him particularly special and interesting, where they put him on the opposing player's weakest shooter, like Kyle Anderson, and he just basically roams off the ball. He helps on the baseline drive here, ignoring Anderson, and then when the ball is passed out, he doesn't even bother to close out. So this roaming is where his true value comes, where he can help off of basically any angle. Here he helps down on the roll man Scotty Barnes, that doesn't even bother to close out on Precious Achua, who's not a great three-point shooter. One of the reasons he's so great at roaming is his ability to scan. You can see an example of that here guarding the same player where he's always checking in on where his player is, his positioning, where the ball is, keeping his head on a swivel. This is perhaps the best clip of roaming I've seen where he's guarding Kaminga in this scenario where he's in the lane not even bothering with where Kaminga is spaced out. When he gets the ball at the top, he kind of honors it a little bit just in case a ball screen set. But in reality, he's literally just sagging off in the lane, waiting for cutters, taking away space. And waiting for these cutters means that any sort of easy advantage the offense has, like off a quick screen, he can be there to help and supply the rim protection and blocks. Since the Grizzlies prefer to take away screening action, they can see him forcing Tatum into the lane here. Jaron Jackson Jr. roaming off, then stops those backdoor cuts or those quick score opportunities for players like Tatum and Dame in this example, making the plays just a little bit tougher. Jaron Jackson Jr. can stay in the lane so much because he uses a trick that all great big defenders use, cleansing, where he puts a hand on a player, just gets a touch, something that Brooke Lopez was highlighted by Eric Nim in a great article for The Athletic, link in the description below. But essentially, anytime you send cutters through the lane, you just get a touch on them or you tag them, and that kind of resets the defensive three seconds, which referees don't call that much anyways. But by putting hands on players as they cut, he essentially is allowed to stay more in the lane, roam more, and be able to prevent that defensive three second call and allow that rim protection to be a little bit easier and it essentially just allows him to always be present in the lane preventing easy scoring opportunities any players cut into the basket but then also have the ability to close out and guard on the perimeter one-on-one -on -one. here are some examples of his roaming help where he's always sort of on the back side or looking for opportunities to help on any rollers take away any rim attempts and always be constantly present and just willing to help at the rim when he's guarding a player that is spaced out on the wing more often than not he will be ready for gap help which means instead of helping at the rim he's helping on the perimeter so for instance in this example an empty ball screen he's guarding the player at the top of the key he basically sits at the nail or sits in the middle and is ready to stop any drives or drive opportunities and then you know dig down on posts or any sort of action off of that and be able to help 
This does mean that he will help on drives in five out offense and be able to stop the ball, prevent any scoring opportunities through the gap help or the first help and stop that drive and not even allow them to get in the lane. Whereas as the low man or the opposite, he would be the primary rim protector, but instead decides to get in the gap and stop drives that way. Of course, Jaron Jackson Jr. has some flaws. He makes some silly fouls, has some bad decisions when it comes to uh, helping and you see him foul out or become a, get in foul trouble more often than not. But he's been much better about that this season and has improved slightly. And I still believe he is the single most impactful defender in the NBA today. And case in point, the Grizzlies went from a middling, struggling defense at the beginning of the year before he came back to having the number one defense in the NBA upon his return. Thank you so much for watching this breakdown. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to like and subscribe. I use my Substack as a Patreon alternative for support for these videos.